Welcome to Time Alone with God, a devotional podcast brought to you by Eden Stream Ministries. I'm Misati, and before we begin, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, as we dive into your word today, I pray that you may help us to learn from it, that you may enlighten us, that we may be able to understand the signs of the times and where we're living right now. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today's devotion is entitled, Riots in Kenya, or Is Your Heart Ready? And I'd like to present something very profound. Did you know that everything that has happened, happened before in the Bible? Most of you have been seeing the news in Kenya of the fearful scenes that have been going on, but let me tell you, this is nothing new. It has all happened before. Let's turn to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 11. We will read from verse 1 up to the end of the story. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for to Shechem were all Israel come to make him king. Rehoboam, by the way, was the son of Solomon. And it came to pass when Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who was in Egypt, whither he had fled from the presence of Solomon the king, heard it, that Jeroboam returned out of Egypt. And they sent and called him. So Jeroboam and all Israel came and spake to Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now therefore ease thou somewhat the grievous servitude of thy father, and his heavy yoke that he put upon us, and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, Come again unto me after three days. Take note of that after three days. And the people departed. And the king Rehoboam took counsel with the old men that had stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, saying, What counsel give ye me to return answer to this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou be kind to this people, and please them, and speak good words to them, they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel which the old men gave him, and took counsel with the young men that were brought up with him, that stood before him. And he said unto them, What advice give ye, that we may return answer to this people which have spoken to me, saying, Ease somewhat the yoke that thy father did put upon us? And the young men that were brought up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou answer the people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make it somewhat lighter for us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. For whereas my father put a heavy yoke upon you, I will put more to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day, as the king bade, saying, Come unto me on the third day. And the king answered them roughly, and the king Rehoboam forsook the counsel of the old men, and answered them after the advice of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add thereto. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king hearkened not unto the people, for the causes of God, that the Lord might perform his word, which he spake by the hand of Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king would not hearken unto them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? And we have none inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to your tents, O Israel. And now, David, see to thine own house. So all Israel went to their tents. But as for the children of Israel that dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadaram, that was over the tribute, and the children of Israel stoned him with stones, that he died. But King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. And Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. Now this is a very sad story the rending of the Israelite kingdom when the nation of Israel several thousand years ago was uh, at its peak with Solomon as the king. Solomon was the richest king 
in all the world that the richest king that had ever lived. And when his son comes to the throne and is asked to reduce the taxes that the people had been paying, he refused and decided, no, I'm going to add more to them. And so the people realized that they were working very hard to pay taxes so that the kings could live a very luxurious and extravagant life. And they decided, no, we don't want this anymore. And we will not have this man as our king. And uh, we see that Rehoboam now, after he realized these people were really serious and after they killed his officer who was over the tribute of the taxes, then he got very scared and ran to Jerusalem to hide there. And we see when he reaches Jerusalem, he tries to stop the people by force. In chapter 11 verse 1, And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin an hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam. And so he was actually bringing out his military, his army, to come and uh, fight against the children of Israel, so that they could come back under his rule and so that he could force them to become his subjects again. But we can see God told him to do something else instead. But the word of the Lord came to Shammai the man of God, saying, Speak unto Rehoboam the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all Israel and Judah and Benjamin, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren. Return every man to his house, for this thing is done of me. And they obeyed the words of the Lord and return from going against Jeroboam. So this story doesn't sound new. It has been repeated over and over again throughout history. And it shows what happens when leaders decide to oppress the people. And it is not the purpose of this devotion to give opinions on who's right or who's wrong. But it is my purpose to ask you, are you ready for whatever may come next? Is your heart right with God? Are you ready if Christ came next week? If you died in those demonstrations, would you have been ready? Think of the people who were injured. Were they ready? Suppose if more people died, would they have been ready? If you die today, are you ready to meet God? These things we're told were happening as a sign of the last days as Satan's character is more fully being revealed and we are called now to make a decision, to make a choice, to choose where we're going to stand. And Peter spoke about this in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 to 11. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. What manner of person do we ought to be now? Are we now going to live carelessly and say, oh, that happened to some other people, it doesn't affect me? We never know what may happen to you. I never know what may happen to me. But one thing I always want to know, if my time came to die, will I be ready? Will my heart be right with God? Are you sure that you have secured salvation for you in heaven? This is something we need to think about because Jesus said in Matthew 24, we won't read it now, that there shall come the time when you shall hear of famines and pestilences and earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars. And also Paul talks about it in one of his epistles saying how people in the last days shall be lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God and thankful and holy and they will be heady, high-minded 
and disobedient to parents and other very bad qualities. And these, those are just to encourage us to continue working with God and for God. And that's why I am asking you, are you ready? Are you ready to finish your work on this earth? Supposing if you were injured there, are you ready now to adjust your life? Are you ready before it becomes too late? Because the time of decision will come to everybody when their probation is about to close. Are you ready to meet with your God? We'll close with the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. And it says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So, you need to prepare yourself. You need to make a firm connection in your life with Jesus. Otherwise, if something happened to you, or if Jesus came back, you won't be ready. And it will be a very sad thing that you won't be ready when you could have been ready. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word that has told us beforehand that there will be turmoil and strife in this world. And I pray that, Lord, you may help us to look at the bigger picture, that we can see all these just point to your coming and how we must be ready for it. Lord, please cleanse us from all our sins. Please make us pure and holy, that we may be able to go and help others to become pure and holy and thus increase the harvest that will come into thy kingdom. I pray that you may please forgive us of all our sins. And Lord, I pray that you may please take care of us throughout the rest of this day. For I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today in Time Alone with God, a devotional podcast brought to you by Eden Stream Ministries. See you next time.